Since the launch of these carp circle hooks, I've had lots of anglers ask me how I tie my hair rigs with bait spikes. Let's whiz over to my tackle room and have an in-depth look into how I tie these hooks. So here we are back in my tackle room. You've all heard the famous saying, fail to prepare, prepare to fail. We all know how important it is for having hooks tied for different disciplines of fishing. Now let's have a look at how I tie an acolyte carp circle hook with a bait spike. Bait spikes are brilliant when you're using wafters, any type of bait that sits up. Wafters are, are a fantastic bait once they're spiked on. So all I've done, I've got a, one single bait spike out of a packet and I'm threading the hook length O20 through the actual ring of the bait spike, pulling down five or six centimetres of line. So it's double line behind the bait spike. I'm then going to loop that line back and pass the bait spike through the loop. The next thing then is to take a spike and just pull that loop down the line, the knot itself, down the line up to the bait spike. Now once you pull that tight then, pull that nice and tight, it's just that single knot is sufficient. I can then trim that off. So I'm trimming off near, virtually tight up to the, to the knot. Now as you can see then, that bait spike is actually in a loop, so it's free to move, it can move around very easily. And that you need that in that loop because you want that bait spike to be able to stand up from the hook. I'm then going to cut off about 30 centimetres of hook length, I'm just using O20 suplex. And I'm tying a size 12 Acolyte Carp Circle hook. Now the main thing is to pass the line down through the eye, the 34 degree eye. I'm then offering the knot up to the shank and it's, it's basically the knot fits exactly where the hook starts to straighten. So when you look at it, the bait spike is, is bang in line with the bottom of the hook. Then I take hold of all of the, the hook and the bait spike and start to pass around the hook, starting on the top of the hook and then whipping down the shank. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14 turns round the shank. Don't ask me why I put 14 on, but it always seems about the right amount. I then pass the line again back down through the eye and pull that tight. So that's then, you, you can see the whipping is a long way down the hook. I don't like to put rubbers on the hook. I don't think it's necessary on these short shank type patterns. Now what you can see then is that your bait spike easily moves around. So once you put a wafter on, it can sit up above the hook. It can lift and sit above it. So that's how I tie the acolyte carp circle up with the bait spike. Once the hook's tied then, I need to put that into a hook box. And what I have, I have a little tool that gives me the length of the hook box that I'm putting it into. Now what I do is probably different to what a lot of people do. I tie all my hook length six inch. And there's a reason for this. Sometimes I want to shorten that hook length down to maybe three inch, maybe three and a half inch, maybe four inch. 
maybe even five inch it just depends what you're fishing for and the size of the fish that you're fishing for so i like to tie all my hooks and put them set them at six inch there's times when i even use a six inch hook length in high to summer so all i do then i tie i put the hook onto the bottom of the the measure and then around the top measure and I just push the loop a couple of mil past the, the actual spike and then I tie with a loop tire just a loop tire one two three times I tie quite a long knot because if I'm going to use this hook length as a six inch I want a very strong knot at the top so once that's tied off then I can then trim that, that hook's already stuck in my finger. They're so sharp, they hook you all the time. So then I can put that hook into wherever I want in the hook box. And that's how I tie my hooks.